Hi guys, we're going back to our roots. This is how we first met. I was a reporter and I interviewed Ben. So we're kind of playing that again today. I'm going to be interviewing him about a topic that's pretty important right now and pretty popular amongst a lot of athletes, which is training alone. And that's something that Ben has done for his entire career. So Ben, tell us a little bit about why you like to train alone. Yeah. Um since I've become a pro and even a little bit before that I started training on my own after being in a group environment and I'm always the first one to say that you know groups kind of have their time and place but training solo overall I think is is something really beneficial to strengthening uh, and pushing pushing your limits your physical limits and your mental limits so you have to find instead of having somebody else push you in a group and just feeding off of them. You have to look within yourself and figure out what's going to make me go faster. Why am I doing this? It goes kind of back to the very beginning and you really, really have to ask what, what is the main motivating driving factor of pushing myself day in and day out for a specific goal. So what can someone think about or do in order to get through the boredom or the lonely phase because a lot of it you're alone with even if you are with people you're in the water or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah. um, I mean how do you really push through it like, what do you think about when you're out there by yourself like finding what's your what's your main motivation like you have to be disciplined to structure out your entire day yourself so what's your motivation yourself. for me it's it's to be my best self and see how far I can push myself which I think at the root is why a lot of people do sport and why they go out and train every day is to see how far we can be pushed and sometimes it takes external factors and people rely on others to kind of help push them but doing that yourself is um, you're going to find that you can dig deeper than you ever thought so it's almost like you have to have so much discipline and really push better than what you were yesterday so you're constantly competing against yourself right and we're all training to race so when you go out and you have this day-to-day -day routine of a discipline and kind of working on your mind and doing things that are uncomfortable which training by yourself is uh inherently kind of uncomfortable feeling there's there's no social aspect um, it's just going to help you when you race. You're already going to be used to going within yourself to ask that question of why am I pushing right now? So each person has to individually answer that. Um, but I think a lot of it can come down to we're, we're looking to improve ourselves in some way. Making the time to, to make a good playlist, especially when you're riding the train or running I mean, the that's pretty much key. Yeah. Get I that mean, rap music going or whatever you like. When my coach Jim gives me a workout, I'm very specific in, you know, if it's 20 minute warm up, it'll be 20 minutes. And if the intervals are five minutes long at, you know, 400 watts, I'm hitting that exactly. Like I'm driven by beating myself. It's like that you versus you instead of you versus the other person. I want to keep beating myself, whether it's in the workout, the workout before, if we're progressing through a series of workouts, it's, it's bettering the last time. So I'm highly driven by, you know, being better than I was the day before, the workout before, whatever. So would you say you've always been like that? Or is that something that you had to acquire over the years? Because if people are just now having to train by themselves, how do they go yeah. about getting into that kind of mentality? It's... I, it's a lot like virtual racing like you can if you've ever played like video games or you have uh, Like a you could drive around a circuit like whether it's Mario Kart or a driving game You can race the fastest time that you set on the lap so before. It's competing it's like with yourself. Yeah, okay. so I've I've just been able to frame it where instead of racing the person next to me I'm racing what I did five minutes ago five days ago or five years ago get some specific goals for the session like what's the point of it if it's to just spin easy on the bike and just enjoy yourself find a way to if you're outside pick your favorite route if you're inside watch your favorite movie it'll help time fly by and it kind of provides that mental distraction that others may have done if um, visualization yeah there's also if it's a hard workout you can put yourself in that race situation so if you're doing you know some really hard efforts on the bike and let's say it's a, a worst case scenario you're on the trainer not really much else going on 
you could put yourself in the race and you could try and imagine what is it going to feel like? How am I going to feel? What am I going to do in the race that I'm training for, which you, we have a lot of time to practice now. So and, going in with yeah. a goal is, is important because you also have numbers to hit then. Pick some sort of metric, your heart rate, power, cadence, something that you can focus on to, to give your mind something to, to narrow in on and keep it active. Okay, and then from a yoga standpoint, I'm going to bring up mantras. We've talked mm -hmm. about this a little yep. bit. When I taught a yoga for athletes workshop, we really kind of dug into this. So repeating a positive statement to yourself, especially when things are difficult, maybe on the run or whatever, you're pushing your limits, yep. uh, that can not only take your mind off of it, but then you start to believe what you're saying. So whatever it is, I'm fast, uh, I'm going to win, or you know, whatever. Um, that, that can be very helpful, but you definitely have to practice that quite a bit. Yeah, and one of the biggest things for solo training is this mental aspect of keeping your mind active. You can really narrow in and focus on all of the little details that you wouldn't get to if you're in a group. And I, I think like running through that mental checklist, really honing, like when you're out on the race course by yourself, like what, what sort of things are you going to distract yourself with? Something that I got from church one Sunday was commitment and discipline. As long as you have those two things, you're good to go. I mean, motivation, that runs out. So yeah. if you're committed to it and you're disciplined to doing it, you're going to be fine. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to talk about like discipline versus motivation, where motivation is fleeting, but discipline is you're doing something even if you don't feel like doing it or you don't want to do it. I, mean, I like a social ride. I like training with people as much as the next. I'll utilize some training partners here and there once in a blue moon, but I found that really when I'm out there on my own, I'm asking myself honest questions and I get a really honest answer of where I'm at in my training and where you know, my discipline and motivation lie. And I know I'm a really competitive person and um, when I was younger training in groups, like we pushed each other very hard and it helped, but I know right now that the best thing for me is to have those clear cut, you know, zones that I can fall back on and that I can't go out of to keep me primed and trained in the correct way and not overreach. So I feel like this should be said. We're not trying to convince people that they have to be yeah. training alone or anything. We're just saying because of the weird time that we're in and a lot of people having to do social distancing and train by themselves now, this is kind of what Ben has always done. And we're giving our tips and tricks, I guess, right. on to why he likes it and, and how he does it. So you can take it or leave it. But I think there's pros and cons to both, training in a group and mm -hmm. how on your own. Uh, but, I mean, he's chosen to be alone for a lot of it until I came into his life, so, <laughs> and even then he's still alone a lot training. So yeah, I mean he has some good ideas to ha how to push through mentally, physically. Yeah, and to echo Courtney, um, I'm not against group training at all, like group rides, uh, training groups, all this stuff are great tools to use to become a better athlete. Um, I think solo training has worked really well for me and I found it to be best for myself to have the control that I want over my time, my schedule, my training, and the detailed um, approach that I like to take. And just trying to open up the door a little bit to share with you guys what I've learned in the advantages of maybe being alone right now when um, some people might see that as a disadvantage or a negative or you might be feeling like you're behind because you're not having those same people out there with you each and every day. But I think that we can also agree that there's a lot of good ways to reach out to your training partners at this time to connect online or virtually. So take that time for yourself, for that quiet time to really focus in on that solo training and work on those details. And then, yeah, shoot your friends a message and hop on on that online training platform or uh, Skype call or something, FaceTime to, uh, to share in and you can still suffer together. So how do you get out the door and make sure you're hitting all these workouts? I mean, it kind of goes without saying because you've already addressed it a little bit, but um, tell us how you do that, how you manage your time when you really, it's all on your own time. You just are yeah. given the workouts and then you have to decide when and how to go about that. It helps that I have a coach who can prioritize workouts for me. So usually for my weakness has been the run 
that I've been working on quite a bit. It's usually the goal of the day is to to do the run workout first and do it well and um, really nail it, and then I fill in and I can do the bike or the swim depending on which one is going to be harder. Solo training isn't for everybody, but right now it is. So when you can't have the group activities, morph your training to be the best that it can be for you. We'll be able to do those group rides and runs again and swim workouts, but I'm here to show you that solo training is not impossible. It's not the worst thing in the world, and it can be greatly beneficial, and you can still push yourself really hard as well. So it's, it's a tool right now that we can all use to be physically and mentally stronger than we've ever been. And I've been doing that for almost my entire professional career. And I, I find that it's really worked well for me. Boom. I think our printer's going off. Yeah, it is. I hate our printer. Thank you.